What's happening, everyone? Welcome back for another episode of the Chamber Podcast. My name is Rob Johnson. We have a very special episode for you today. Joining me in studio is Mike Giorgio, General Manager of Mountain Brighton. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Mike, Mount Brighton, we're sitting here, it's October, coming up on the winter season, which is your guys' busy season, but this summer's probably been a little bit different than most summers in Mount Brighton. We've had Main Street closed down yep. here in the city, and a couple of events have moved out to Mount Brighton, and yep. that's where I want to start the show, and then we'll get back into your background and how you became the GM sure. over there. So, so walk me through what kind of a summer it's been uh, at Mount Brighton, a little bit different, I imagine. Yeah, it's been... Uh it's been exciting and fun. Um, like you said, you know, they're going through the whole renovation downtown. And so I've, you know, kind of started, I don't know, I'd say about this time last year, started a conversation with the chamber, just trying to get, um, the conversation going with anyone. Hey, how can we be part of the community? How can we help you all out? Like, and as we talk about my history, you know, I had a rich um, engagement with events and chambers in Vermont. So I just was, you know, how can we be part of what you all are doing? You're doing some great events and we just want to, you know, give our time and space. And so we started the conversation about Yellowstone and then uh, Smoke and Jazz came into the conversation as well, um, which we anticipate going back downtown uh, because we know that, you know, the businesses down there really rely on that time and everybody enjoys it. So, yeah, we just wanted to figure out how can we use this space that we have and have folks come out and enjoy it. Well, I happened to be at both events and it was flawlessly executed for awesome. being the first time there. And that was actually my first time at Mount Brighton cool. as well. Um, and it was just, it was excellent how it was laid out. And, you know, the team there did a, did a fantastic job of getting everything put together and, and everyone that I've talked to and, and took to the event said it was great. So great. that's, it was a nice backup plan to have when, you know, things in downtown start operational right now. Yeah. And I mean, that's absolutely part of it as well. And, you know, I, I have to give a shout out to Linda from the chamber, Absolutely. the events coordinator. She did a lot of the work and, you know, my team as well. They showed up and we hauled a lot of beer and hauled a lot of ice, but it was uh, it was definitely an effort from everybody. Absolutely. I did my best to lighten the load for you guys. You have to take so many <laughs> back. So I, I tried That's to good. do my part as well. Somebody's got to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into, let's get into your history a little bit about sure. how you came. So if you're from Vermont. So I'm actually from New Jersey. From um, New Jersey. But I, uh, so I started my career in hospitality, essentially, right? Um, hotels mostly. I started in kitchens. I uh, went to culinary school and Eventually, after many years in uh, working in beaches and working in hotels and cities, I decided that I wanted to get away from that all. And I moved to Vermont and took an exec chef role at Mount Snow. And then, like a lot of people in the ski industry, never left. And so I stayed there for almost 12 years. And uh, Mount Snow was acquired by Vail Resorts in 2019. And uh, yeah, Vail Resorts has a really rich leadership um, and talent philosophy. And so through that, you know, I started to uh, look at opportunities and, uh, you know, Mount Brighton, the GM role came up and it really, you know, I've always wanted to run a ski resort. That's always been since I've been in the industry, what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I got the opportunity and here I am two years later. Have you ever seen the movie The Shining? I have. Yeah. So, so. so when I think about Vermont in the winter, <laughs> it, it seems like you're going to be snowed in <laughs> for six months. Not quite that. And you're the caretaker. Yeah, not not quite to that level. I, I think the difference uh, in Vermont is we know what to do with the snow, where in that movie, you kind of didn't, you know, I don't think they really knew what to do. Point. So, fair point. Um, yeah, it's not quite the same. <laughs> so... I've never been to Mountain Brighton in the winter. It's something yep. that is on my list to do this, sure. this, uh, you know, this upcoming season. So for a beginner like me, if you were to say, okay, what is, what is there to do at Mountain Brighton? Obviously it's a ski resort, sure. but, but walk me through the, the highs of what you can do at Mount Brighton. Yeah. I think really it's, it's a big experience. There's a lot to do. Um, my recommendation is always going to be to plan early, right? That's, that's the most important part. You know, that you're going to come, you're going to bring your family, you're going to maybe come for a certain amount of days. Um, the earlier you, the earlier you plan, the cheaper it's going to be. Right now we have our Epic Passes are on sale. So like the earlier you buy those, the better. But we have a whole wide variety of pass and, and products really that are out there. So even if you're only going to come one to like five or six or seven days, there's past deals out there that are as low as 42 bucks a day. And then you can get, 
you know, I always recommend if you're going to rent gear and you, it's your first time, take a lesson, right? And so um, if you plan your lessons now, you can get the kids in lesson or you can just get a lesson for yourself and then uh, you'll have a better experience. You'll know what to expect when you get there. There'll be guidance on how to ski or snowboard. And so that's always the first recommendation. Plan ahead of time, save a bunch of money. And then when you get there, have a good time. I mean, there's a lot to do, right? We have we have five aerial lifts. We have a whole bunch of tow ropes and, and carpets. So there's ev- every level there for you to, to learn at. And we've got two restaurants. We've got bars. We've got the whole thing. So we have live music. We have events going on. So there's a lot. So, you know, keep in tune with our website. Check out what's going on. And, and really just, uh, you know, like uh, follow the lead and, and uh, have a good time. So people are coming from, you know, states away to come and hang out at Mountain Brighton. How does lodging work there? So we don't, we don't have any lodging. Um, we have a couple of, uh, preferred, um, uh, lodging recommendations within the, within Brighton area that are, you know, there's some spots right nearby. Brighton is, you know, it's unique. We're right in the middle of Brighton, which there's, it's kind of like a growing area. There's a lot of infrastructure around here. So we get a lot of, uh, daily participants, right? A lot of people that do drive up from shore Detroit and Ann Arbor for the day. Um, but also like a lot of people who come every day, racers, terrain park. Um, you know, we host a bunch of different programming, like outreach programming that bring people who probably would never be able to come out and snowboard and ski. So, um, but we have a real strong connection to our local, um, our, our local guests. And really what a lot of them do is they use Mount Brighton as this kind of like get the warms, get your legs all warmed up for the season and then like travel out West for a week, go to Colorado, go to Tahoe. So it's like a real good space to kind of keep your legs going and keep your, you know, you know, just get ready for the big trip out West or something like that. Got it. So if I was a complete amateur used to snowboard when I was younger, yeah. Um, still, still room for me at Mount Bright. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's for all, I mean, like I've snowboarded all over the place and I am on my snowboard almost every day. And, uh, also there are every day there is somebody who this is their first time. And we take that really serious because we love the sport and we want everyone to. So we create space for anyone, whether you're an expert or this is the first time ever to come and enjoy yourself. I love it. What's your favorite thing about Mount Brighton. I know you have, you've been to different resorts. You've been to different places, states. What's one of your favorite things about this since you've been here for a couple of years now? Yeah, I, I get that question a lot. And I think like it, it may seem cliche, but like it's always going to be the people, right? And it's always going to be like the staff and the guests. Within that, it's always going to be the person who never, who's never been there, who never thought they could do this and then by the end, the end of the day, they're smiling, they're having a great time, and they can't wait to come back, right? Like, like I said, I came to this industry for a job, and here I am almost 15 years later because I love it. And like, the more I can instill that passion and my team can instill that passion into people, that's the best part of the job. And I get to snowboard every day, so I, mean, I can't complain about that. <laughs> it's a win-win. I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about the younger, younger people, so kids sure. that are coming. So is it... Is it something where kids can take lessons? I know you mentioned that in yeah. the in the overview. So if kids are looking to ski or snowboard, that's something you guys do quite a bit of. Yeah, absolutely. I, like right now, like we have our multi-week uh, programs. So it's like the best deal if you think you're going to come. Like my kids come every weekend and I sign them up for nine consecutive weeks. So there's th- it's multi-week is three lessons in a row where it's kind of tiered learning and then you can bulk that out like however many times you want to do that so we have those programs which are great if you know you're going to be coming to the hill every weekend you really want to get your kid like really really into the sport it's great or if you have like a four-year-old and you're not sure whether they want to do it there is a one hour private lesson that just kind of gauges, you know, where they're at, whether they're going to deal with it or not. And, and then, you know, we also have great beginner programs for folks that aren't kids. Like we have a, what we call bunny hill basics essentially. And it's a really cheap deal. It's a package deal on Wednesday nights. And um, yeah. So if you've never done it, you come and, and learn. So we offer a wide variety of lessons for all different folks. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot geared towards kids, though. 
All right. So when does the season typically start? I'm sure it depends on, on the, on the weather, but when do you guys usually open and close still? Yeah, you, you hit it on, uh, on the head. I, I wish I could give you a date, sure. <laughs> uh, cause it would make everything easier. Crank those <laughs> snow machines. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to wait for the temps. Um, I, boy, do I wish I could just turn them on and make it happen. Um, but, uh, typically we, we need a good period of time. We, we want to make sure that we're making snow and we're not just going to lose it. So we, we are always looking out, you know, we're looking at the next day, the five day, the 10 day forecast. We're, we're doing yeah. the best we can. And, um, yeah, typically we will announce once we feel confident. Um, and I think if you look at our historical dates, it's probably going to be similar around those, but the real answer is we'll get open as fast as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so tell me a little bit about the live events that happened there. So yeah. that was something that, that caught my attention when you had said that's yeah. it's more of an experience as well. So you might go there to sure. ski, snowboard, but then there's bars, foods, live events. Yeah. Walk me through that. Yeah. So like we have everything from like just having someone playing music at the bar on like a Friday night to like big events. Like our last year we had our first annual duct tape derby, which was really awesome in which, um, anybody really, you didn't, you don't have to be your skier or rider can, uh, build a sliding device that is only made out of cardboard and duct tape. And you bring it up to the top of one of our Hills and you get in it. <laughs> And you race down <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it is a lot. It was really awesome. People get super creative. And so like there was some crazy designs, like there was people who put made an entire chariot with like horses all out of cardboard. I mean, the design was amazing. You could check out our Instagram. There's pictures all over from it. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then we have DJs and, and bars during the whole thing and food outside. So we really create this experience, uh, for that specific day. And then we also have like throughout all of January and February, every Sunday we do s'mores. So from like, I think it's from one to three, we go out and we just give out s'more packets and for whoever wants to sit in front of a fire and make a s'more. <laughs> so like, we really try to create that, that full experience of that you get at, you know, um, any ski resort or, you know, maybe some stuff that's special or specific to Mount Brighton. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different events that we host throughout the season. So if someone's getting information, the website's probably the best place for them to go to stay updated. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, website is the go-to. We have a full events list. That's where all our products can be purchased. So whether it's lift tickets or, uh, or ski and ride school, um, lessons or rentals, any of that is on the website. And then, yeah, also follow our Instagram. We're pretty active. We post a lot of that stuff out there as well. Where's been the most interesting place that you've snowboarded at? Most interesting? Uh, well, there's been a couple of like, just like side hills in city areas that I've like <laughs> slid down. Well, let's go like maybe the most picturesque or the, <laughs> or maybe the, the wildest. Yeah. Or, no, or, I, I think danger. I think a place that's really close to my heart. I spent a lot of time out in Mount hood in Oregon. Um, it's a, it, it's a wild place. Like you could be out there snowboarding in like in, in July. Um, and it, it's pretty crazy. Like it's pretty high up and, uh, there's a lot of terrain. It's a massive mountain. It's in the Cascades, So it's in, in, uh, Oregon. Like I said, Mount hood has a special place. I spent a lot of time out there when I was younger and stuff, uh, before kids, before wife and stuff like that. Um, but I like, I don't know if I'm sliding on snow, I'm having a good time. Like I, I love new places too. So wherever, wherever's new is always fun. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys will make the announcement when the, when the temperature and the snow hits the right mixture. Yeah. So. The, the second we all agree and we're <laughs> like, yeah, we can do this. We'll make the announcement. <laughs> I love it. Anything else before I wrap up? No, just thanks for having us and uh, excited to see you come out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'll yeah. be there. Yeah. I think my kids, my kids are both excited to get into snowboarding. Good. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, I've talked to them about it last year. It was a pretty, pretty mild winter. Yeah. So not a lot going on. Um, yeah. you probably felt that. <laughs> I, I did indeed. <laughs> so excellent. Well, I'll definitely see it on the slopes. I probably won't be standing up, but I'll do my level best to do so. So thanks for stopping today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this week's episode. You can find all of Mike's information, everything on Mountain Brighton in the show notes. Be sure to check that out. And hopefully I will see you on the slopes in a somewhat vertical position. Take care.